India is a market where this is not the norm, this is not the culture, having parties till 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. and listening to electronic music. This is not what we've grown up with. This is something that people like me are working really hard towards introducing. My mum used to always be like, would your husband be okay with you know you doing this for a living? You're gonna be out partying and what is he gonna think? This is more important to me than it would probably be being in a relationship. I just have to continue doing what I really want to do. I used to always actually listen to music, but it was only when I moved to the UK that I kind of had my first ever interaction going to like a proper gig. In India, when I used to go partying in my teens, it used to end up being like these fancy clubs. So everyone's always dressed up and wearing heels and you know, their dresses. And I was going for a party in Birmingham and I was like, I'm gonna dress up. And I remember I walked into the warehouse with like heels. And then I was just like, whoa, <laughs> what is going on? Like everyone was, dressed super casually, it's just like one rundown raw place. It was so simple, the energy was great, and I instantly fell in love with the music. Then when I came back to India, I realized that like usually every weekend I had a ticket to go see someone play in the UK. And now I'm just like, where do I even go to listen to good music? I think that's how it all started. Anu was always in the card somewhere, just like we'd bring her down sometimes. There's a lot of emotion behind this tour for me. Being in India for the first time is a big deal and it feels really surreal. She's doing such good work in her own way and she's faced her fair challenges of being an Indian in England as well. So there were a lot of contrasting similarities, I would say. artist I've ever done and it's so funny because I can feel the difference in like just the energies and every time it's always been a male act and it's been great but it definitely feels a bit more special I think I feel I can have that girl to girl bond with someone and I've never felt that on tour um, but with her I felt that the instant we just sat in the car. I grew up in like Hangzhou it's like such an Asian area like so many Indian people live in Hangzhou <laughs> And all of my friends just wanted to go to like clubs in Leicester Square where you would have bottle service and they would wear heels and like nice dresses and stuff. But I didn't want to do that, you know? Like it was only when I turned 18 and I kind of found my own friends who were into the same music. And I was always like a weird person at school. Growing up, like I was always kind of like an outcast because of the things I liked. My parents came here when they were very young, so I feel when they moved here, they tried to assimilate into the English culture as much as they could. That meant forgetting a lot of their actual Indian identity. Maybe it is because of my parents' influence, but like, I, I never wanted to be brown. A lot of the time, like, I don't feel Indian and I don't feel English either. I just feel like I'm in this weird limbo, yeah, because I, I can't speak Gujarati, I can't speak Punjabi. I would sometimes wear like foundation that was way lighter than my actual skin color and my skin would end up looking grey. I just wanted to be white, I wanted to be like everyone else, I wanted to be desirable to people, you know? Everyone around me was white, all of my friends were white. I would go out to clubs and I would be sometimes like the only person of color in a room. I would have racist experiences, sometimes even from my friends, where they would just make like jokes about me being brown. It just makes you feel shit. Like, it makes you feel small. It makes you feel like you don't belong. 
I don't want to be that coconut. I don't want to be that white person on the inside, that brown person on the outside. I want more of a bond with my culture. And that's what I'm really hoping this trip will do for me. I think what's incredible about India is you can see people opening up to different music genres that are being presented to them. Currently, Indian hip hop is being able to create its own genre in itself. We do not teach just an element of hip hop, but we are contributing towards hip hop as a movement. We are building hip hop as a culture through the Dharavi project. So, age group ranges from 6 years old to 21 years old. We've got four different classes that we've done. One is b-boying, which is breaking, second one is rap, third is b-boxing and fourth one is graffiti. The school is just an amazing opportunity for all of us to learn, to teach, to share skills and it's amazing to be a part of it. When you're flying from another city into Mumbai, the only thing that you see from your window pane is the shantis, just slums and slums and slums. But if you look deep inside that shantis, inside the slum area, there's another window which leads to such amazing talent. <laughs> We get more boys, there are very, very few girls. That is something that I really want to change in the future. Right now we have only Gayatri who is the female beatboxer who has gone against her family coming and learning beatboxing here. My father never wanted me to work, he never wanted me to study as well. He felt that he is the earning member in the family, so why should his daughters work? After education, the first thing that they should do is get them married. I think my parents are quite conservative and traditional as compared to the rest of my family. So it has been challenging to kind of make them understand why this is so important to me. I think it is very different having a woman who is so consumed in her career as compared to like having a relationship. I've probably let my partners down because I get consumed in work. Like when I'm touring, I might not even message because I want to be like 100% in the door, you know. I love how Anisha is just like very open and honest with the way that she feels. She's not afraid to tell us that she's been stressed out or anxious, you know, she just says it and more people need to be like that. In our communities, we don't recognise mental health as a thing. We don't talk about it and so I can't imagine what it's like here to have mental health issues. Okay, time for my first show in India. I think a lot of my anxiety comes from fear of the unknown. 
you're constantly meeting people. You kind of have to perform and be like that kind of sociable person, which I don't, I don't always want to be. But DJing has really helped me with my confidence. 10 minutes before stage, I might be feeling at my lowest of lows. Then I DJ and I'm able to switch that off. I just did a tour with Seth Troxler last week and I met so many people across all the three cities who only came and told me that they're so happy that a woman did this. And these are fellow women. Someone's inspired seeing me do something and then they do something because of that and I've played a 0.1% role in it. And that's incredible, right? And it makes you want to push yourself more. I had such a wave of emotions today. <laughs> um, yeah, it was very all over the place, but then the gig was so much fun. Everyone here is so friendly. I feel very at home here, which I did not expect. The two venues in Pune that do really well. Mm -hmm. One caters to a lot of student crowd because Pune is a student city. There was this massive blowout sometime last mm -hmm. year where the owner kind of got into this entire harassment case of things where a lot of girls started speaking up that he probably wasn't appropriate. The Me Too movement in India, a lot of people were being called out who were people we've worked with. This obviously takes a lot of courage for people to speak up and it made me think about all my experiences and instances that I've had in, in my life with men. You know, probably there have been a few instances where I didn't do anything about it either, just thinking that boys will be boys. But that's not the case because you're indirectly encouraging that again. A lot of it is to do with a lack of education, a lack of sex education as well. I don't think anybody in this country has ever been taught consent in schools and what it means. It just seems like a genuine allowance of toxic masculinity to kind of fester within the scene. I mean, it's just disheartening to see that in a space which is supposed to be like open for everybody and safe for everybody, that it's being used as an opportunity to do these things. It's funny though, because everything's settled down now. Mm -hmm. Like, the girl's still going to the venue. Really? It's still buzzing. Like, people are still there. Right. And nothing's really changed. Like this lazy excuses for not taking action, that needs to change. And someone like Taru, someone like Daniel in Halflong, they're really good examples for how you can connect with your local community and like work towards issues that you can impact. Base Foundation Roots sound system is one of only two sound systems in all of India, maybe South Asia. I don't the idea was to be able to do gigs independently out of the industry and take reggae kind of back to its foundation, which is sound system culture. It's called Rubadub. It started in the ghettos of Kingston, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because Mr. India, the Big Bang, stands for unity. Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Of course, you know, we perform at music festivals if we're asked to, but we can also uh, perform at protest spaces, we can perform with an organization, we can roll up in our van into a small village, say, in the middle of Assam. There's a general kind of whitewashing and sanitizing that's been happening on reggae music, which at the core to me has always been about anti-colonial struggle and about blackness. Somehow I feel like we have to stay true to that tradition and find ways to make that meaningful in India. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
reggae music, when we say Babylon, we mean the corrupt system. We mean Adani and Ambani and all the fascists who love to spread hate and make a political career. So here it is! India is a post-colonial society. And in many ways, the new state after independence continued the same policies that the colonial regime did. What you have in India at the moment is a kind of fusion of capitalism and of Hindu majoritarian fascism. In India, as in many other parts of the world, there's very, very severe repression at the moment. Like artists and writers and journalists have been killed and it's gotten to a point where you can't just carry on, you know, you have to acknowledge what's happening and try and respond in whatever way you can, you know. The wonderful thing about reggae also is that though the themes are, say, social uh, injustice, oppression, colonialism, one wants to create a safe space for people to dance and move in unison, in rhythm. I, I see that as a form of resistance as well, but it's also a very empowering space, young, old, Whatever, <laughs> you're all welcome, you know. My yoga practice anchors me because it makes me more aware of how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, my intentions. I have the tools then to work through pain and anger and stress and to constantly redefine one's motivation and intention. Practicing Buddhism definitely has grounded me. The entire philosophy is about taking responsibility for your own actions. So that tool has been extremely helpful in helping me have that conviction that you can achieve anything you put your mind and heart to. I feel so happy <laughs> when, I, when I just say the name of my country. It's very spiritual to me. It gives me a feeling of motherhood and a land of opportunities in spite of the struggle that we face here. India is all about empowerment, about future. I'm so happy being a woman in this lifetime for sure because being a woman is about pushing boundaries. We've always had to fight. And establishing the art of being strong yet kind. Kindness is always, a lot of people consider that to be weakness. But it's a gift that women have because we can be kind, empathetic, sensitive. And at the same time, no one can mess with us as well. I think this tour has been a really, really good thing for me. It's made me feel like I've got what it takes to do this. It's 
just so nice to be in a club where everyone else has the same skin colour as you. And like the white people are the minority in the club. Like it's a really cool feeling. And it's something that I've never experienced and it just makes me want to come back here even more. Now that I've been here and I've experienced it, I feel more comfortable in calling this my home and like the motherland. This is part of my cultural identity and it always will be. It's just exciting to want to come back, like, and to feel like I have a connection with this place.